What is going on YouTube? This is Wi-Fi Mamma here today. Bring you guys another VGC 2020 on the ladder uh, Wi-Fi battles. Um, t today I have more of a um, testing video and telling you somewhat of my uh, schedule on what, how I'm going to be uploading here in the next um, little bit anyway. If um, But um, starting things off, I've changed my editing style just a little bit. Um, it ain't fully to perfection yet. There's little tweaks still I want to fix. But what I'm trying to do is get all the uh, wait time. Like um, the communication and me selecting all the moves and stuff. I'm going to go ahead and try and um, take those out. And that way we can just have a um, battle that's just more smoothly, you know. It looks more like an actual fight more so than a, um, I don't know, um, just playing the video game. You know how the old versus recorders used to just do this? Well, I'm pretty much going to try and recreate like a versus recorder style videos because I think those always look a little bit better anyway. And since my content so far has been post narration, it's always been a, um, it's always just easier to do post narration. But I've kind of thought to myself, man, the editing on post narration, I should be doing a little bit more. So um, I came up with this idea to take all the uh, communications and selecting of the moves and all that out. It ain't perfect, but I'll figure out how to make it even better and better. I guarantee you by the next five, six videos, I'll uh, have it pretty close to perfection but anyway let me guys know let me know how you guys like this this style because I do think it looks better and that's all I'm trying to do is make my content look better for you guys uh, second thing that's on the agenda though is I'm um, talking about my um, work actually on what I actually do and stuff um, I know none of y'all really know exactly what I do I go and my main job, let me go ahead and tell you about that first. Um, I go into a factory job and um, I make car parts. It's no big deal. I mean, I don't mind doing it. I've, I've been doing it for about five years now. Um, but they shut down during this COVID-19. And, um, well, they just called me back, uh, I believe, Friday. Friday or Saturday, they called me back saying hey we need you to uh, report back in Monday which will be the day that this video uploads how I'm gonna get this video uploaded is I'm actually gonna try um, the YouTube schedule system where you go ahead and upload your video and then um but they won't make it public until a certain time that you set it up so I'm gonna try and make this um to upload this video onto YouTube it should be uploaded around Monday at 11 o'clock central time um, so that's that's the plan go ahead and try and get that situated but my plan for YouTube is to only upload two days a week until I get used to going back to work because Right now, with this new editing style, it actually takes me a little bit more time to go through my battles and uh, edit, but to me it's worth it. You know, I want to make the best content I can out there, so this is 100% worth it. And um, I also, you know, I also want to have, I want to spend time with my family as well. So to me, two days a week right now is almost okay, it's perfect perfectly fine with me but anyway hope you guys understand two days a week for a little bit I do appreciate the uh, growth though that this channel has went through uh, just like last week we've had like a about four five six subscribers onto the onto the channel you know thank you for the su subscribing because that means a lot for me um i do apologize if you do hear my son out there in the background 
uh, you may not, but um, when I edit, I'll see if I can pinpoint the spot where he's in the background or not. Because um, right now I can hear him. He he's he's in the background screaming, "Mommy, mommy!" <laughs> yeah. But anyway, I do appreciate all the support that this channel has gotten. I know it doesn't. I know it doesn't look like I have much subscribers. I only have 14 subscribers at the recording of this video. But to me, that's a lot. You know, if I stood in front of 14 people and had to give a speech, I mean, I would be I'd be nervous. So, And as of right now, I'm still a little nervous when I'm presenting YouTube videos. But I'm trying to do my best to make them the best possible. So, maybe... Um, Hopefully I'll get better over time. I believe I am because I am getting somewhat comfortable. But at the same time, you know, I mean, it takes time. Um, like one of the great YouTubers um, said in one of his videos, make a hundred crappy videos and then compare your first video, your first crappy video to your hundredth crappy video and you tell me if you see the improvement. And I can definitely tell. I can definitely see um, already a difference. And I'm not even maybe maybe like 10 videos in. So yeah, I'm actually I can already see a difference. So um, my plan is to stay on this platform for a very very long time. But let's go ahead and um, let's just narrate this last battle. All right, so. Um, my opponent goes ahead and leads uh, Dusclops and Lapras, as I lead my Dusclops and Togekiss. Uh, this is pretty much your typical Lapras team. So let's go ahead and um, narrate it. I do want to actually, I do realize I didn't uh, include the team preview. So um, what I want to do is probably leave about 10 seconds for the team preview per battle. That way you guys know who I'm, who I'm going up against. But anyway, I went ahead and went for a Dazzling Gleam with my Togekiss. He goes for the Renaissance. Fails to pick up the KO on my bulky Togekiss. And I believe I go for a Nightshade onto the Dusclops. The thing I like about this style is that way, if I get ahead of myself with my narration, I know the battle is not that far off, and I was wrong. I went for Will-O-Wisp onto the Lapras. In case if it was a leftover set, and there's a nightshade into my dust class. I had my moves mixed up a little bit. But in case he had leftovers, which a lot of Laprases do carry, burn pretty much negates the leftovers. And that, to me, that's pretty nice. Uh, right here, I had no other. Re I didn't have a reason to go for follow me because most likely he's gonna go for into the Toki Kiss anyway. So I was like, okay, I'll dazzling gleam. That's fine. There's the Max Lightning. He goes right into my Togekiss. That's okay. I'm going to go into a Nightshade into his Dusclops now, though. As you'll... Now I'm using a Nightshade into the Dusclops. I was a turn... Like I said, I was a turn ahead, um, ahead or behind, however you want to word it. But he sets a Trick Room. And um, this is why I decided to go into my Snorlax. Now in the last... Um, battle I didn't show my switching into uh, Snorlax or switching into my Pokemon this one I went ahead and done I do want to have that animation to where my guys actually throwing Snorlax in um, but when I and I thought I put that in there but when I went back through and watched the edit I was like Ugh. oh well I'll um we'll just do it next time because well in this battle it in the very end it kind of gets a little choppy I guess because you'll see you'll see it was just because I edited it kind of wrong but I'll uh, like I said I'll get better at editing this style like I said give me five videos and then I guarantee you you come back to this one and uh, when you just watch after the fifth video of this and you're gonna be like a shock do you know the difference because I, I I mean I know there's I know there's little spots that I could improve on this, but I wanted to get some content out there for you guys. But anyway, back to the battle. 
Snorlax is out there. Dynamax is goes for Max Quake, so I can get another special defense boost. I know it didn't do much damage to Dusclops, but that's okay. I could have probably went into the Lapper slot. It really doesn't matter where I went for my Max Quake. I, I just needed a special defense boost. Okay, so Lapras goes ahead and undynamaxes. And um, right here, I wasn't necessarily predicting the ally switch at no means. But that's alright. We can um, play around the ally switch from here on. No big deal. I do double the Dusclops. And man, I was so close to getting the KO. I was like, man. That's just, to me, Dusclops is one of the hardest Pokemon to KO. He just always stays around, always finds a way to get recovery if they run into Pain Split set, and it's really annoying. It really is. I really kind of want to find a spot on my moveset for Pain Split, but then again, I don't have a spot on my moveset for Pain Split. So maybe I need to look into trying to find a spot for it. But anyway. Lapras gets some more recovery as they they do end up knocking out my dust clubs here, but that's okay. That's okay. So right here, I go into my Dracovish. Like I said, I want to show the animation to where Dracovish comes out of his Pokeball and lands onto the field. I just think it adds more presentation to it. I just failed to put that in apparently. But anyway. Uh, let's see what I do. I go for Max Overgrowth into the Lapras. I figured he wasn't going to ally switch again. That's the biggest thing. I was like, oh, he ain't going to ally switch again. Um, I did go for Protect on for Dracovish, so I was able to avoid the uh, Freeze Drive. I was really hoping to get a KO, but I failed. Right here, though, this is where I was predicting a um, ally switch, I believe. It depends. I believe this is free turn to Dynamax, so I should. That's why I'm trying to pinpoint. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right here. I un Dynamax and I predict the ally switch. And I was correct. So I was like, alright, alright. I go for the C bomb. Get the um, KO onto the Lapras. And then I go for a Vicious Wren to get more damage onto this Dust Clops. This Dust Clops just seems like it keep, wants to keep on staying around on the field. Which is so crazy. Because Dust Clops is so, so bulky. But anyway. Uh, I believe he brings out Conkelder. He does. I go ahead, go for a Vicious Wren. I guess, I don't know why he didn't go for a Mock Punch or Detect or anything, but he didn't. So, and then I go for C-Bomb into the Dust Clops. So we knock out the Con Kelder in one hit. Alright, so he sets a Trick Room. Alright, and then he brings in a uh, Rhyperior, I believe. After all the recovery. But, yeah. And someone's calling my phone. So, um, I got like one minute of this narration left. So I'm going to try and do it. Let the phone ring. <laughs> but anyway, Rhyperior takes some more damage. Um, he goes for a horn drill and he actually misses, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Which I'm grateful for. Thank goodness, right? Uh, I go for the Vicious Wren. Okay, they hung up. <laughs> I go for the Vicious Wren, get the KO onto the Rhyperior. And then um, all I'm missing now is a... Uh, KO onto this Dust Clops, and it's pretty at this point, it's pretty simple. All I have to do it takes like three turns though to do this, but I'm just trying to damage it, man. There's no way he can beat my Snowlax, so I don't understand why. Um, I don't understand why um, he thought he could win this battle by uh, pain splitting because with nightshade you cannot hit my snorlax so there's no damage that he can do he's just stalling my time at this point which i mean i guess it's all right anyway but right here fur turn finally um goes for pain split doesn't recover that much i go for a heavy slam and a crunch and it sh and i win the game 
anyway guys um thank y'all for watching if y'all enjoyed this video comment like and subscribe um anyway let me know in the comments down below what you think about this new editing style uh anyway guys this is wi-fi merriman signing off peace